Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Jeffrey Lazarus, and you are watching Welcome to Castle of Illusion on the Gaming Vector. So, wow, well, let's get back here. Castle of Illusion is kind of a remake slash remastering slash reimagining of the old Disney Sega game, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. So let's jump right in here and we'll take a look at the help and options. So how to play is basically gives you your tutorial messages. Under controls, there are really no control options, unfortunately. All you get is vibration on or off. However, the controls are fairly simple. It's a basic platformer game. There's only really two buttons that you use, so not that big of a deal. Video options. Brightness, that's it. Audio options. There is something rather interesting here. You can turn the narration off. You can turn the subtitles on and off, which are both good things. You can also have the standard modern Castle of Illusion soundtrack or the classic tracks from the classic game. Nice little touch there. We're going to go ahead and confirm the classic tracks, so hopefully you'll be able to hear those as we play. Now, this is probably going to be a rather short welcome to you because there's not a lot to this game, but I do want to show it off because there's been so much talk about the DuckTales Remastered game, which is coming out on Xbox Live Arcade in a few weeks and is already out on other platforms, that this one, I think, kind of fell under the radar a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and continue. And I really kind of want to show it off because it's... Spoiler alert, it's actually a pretty good game. So... First thing you will notice that would help him save Minnie. But he knew there were more to find, and the masters of illusion would not give them up without a fight. First thing you'll notice is the uh, the narrator we have. He's got a good voice. It feels makes you feel like you're kind of watching a Disney cartoon or a Disney movie. The other thing you're gonna notice here is we actually have some 3D elements going on. So this is the Castle of Illusion. And this is basically, if you ever played Super Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie, you see the number above the door. That's how many gems you need to unlock the door. There's various doors in the castle that open up the different levels. Over here on the right-hand side, we can view paintings that we have earned. So there's a painting of one of the boss creatures. I don't know if that's supposed to be concept art or exactly what it is, but little collectibles you can gather up. You'll notice up here we have a door for 160. Also requires the orange gem to open, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. This one requires 80 and the red gem, which we already have, but I'm not going to head through there just yet. I want to head back down here to the bottom, and I will show you a couple of levels and show you why I think that this is something you might want to check out. So, this is the first set of levels. I'm actually going to go into the second one so I can show it off. But you notice this castle is 3D. The entire game does not play in 3D. It's a remake of a kind of uh, 2D platformer for the most part, and it still very much plays like a 2D platformer for the most part. There are some 3D elements, but there, at least at the point that I have been to, there have been no actual 3D platforming segments. As you can see, it's a very pretty looking game. It's got that watercolor kind of uh, Disney art style going on. Oh, I didn't want to grab the stopwatch. So the stopwatch is actually something that pops up in a level after you've beaten it, and it allows you to do time attack. As you can see, it's your basic platforming. Mickey does keep his momentum going, so when you land on a platform, you want to make sure that you're landing with enough room to actually compensate for that momentum. Now, one of the things I wanted to show. So if you look in the background, you see those ghosts floating around, much like they are up here in the front. And in a few moments, we will actually make our way back there. Oh, if I can not fall off of the thing. We will actually make our way back to that area, which is one of the cool things that I kind of like about the way this game has been designed, is they managed to keep it as mostly a 2D platformer, but... They added in things like that kind of depth of field. Also, there we see a red ghost with a big cheesy grin, and this guy will move out of our way and let us fall so that these plants can spit stuff at us. But as you can see, those plants are now closer than the stuff that was in the background before. And as we move along, 
just using our basic platforming skills, we're actually going to end up now, we're right next to those same plants that were spitting at us earlier. So still very much a 2D game, but they managed to move us along a 3D plane without really noticing that you're moving along a 3D plane. And I really like that from the, uh, from a design standpoint. And now, remember the ghosts that we saw earlier that were kind of circling around? Yeah, we've actually gone into the background far enough to make it to them. And there you can see behind us even more back there. And that's kind of how these levels are laid out. You kind of work your way, sometimes you work your way into the background of the level. And you can see things that you're going to be encountering before you actually encounter them. Which is really kind of a cool idea. Oh, wait, I had, um, hmm. Did I get myself stuck here? No, 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 no. There is, there we go. Oh, actually, no, we've made it to that next section. And fallen to our death. And fallen again, because I am a big dummy. But yeah, for the most part, basic platforming stuff, there are... There is one other bit of functionality, and that is Mickey apparently is real good at throwing apples, I guess. Oh, balls. I keep failing this again and again, and I have fallen and died. Luckily, as you can see, a decent little checkpoint system going on, so we actually get dropped right where we failed. So not too punishing of a game, luckily. There we go. So Mickey, with the B button, can throw apples. The A button jumps, the stick, or the D-pad allows you to maneuver around the level. As you would expect. You can also duck to get under narrow passageways such as that. And here momentarily, we'll see one of the 3D areas. So the camera switches on these 3D areas. Not always necessarily to this view but it does switch, and that gives you an indication that you've moved into one of these areas. It also gives you the ability to move freely through obstacles and try and gather up some more of these gems which you need to unlock new areas of the game. And by heading through this door, we will actually exit this level. And there you can see our stage clear time, and then we can return back to the castle. Now, before we finish up here, I'm going to show you guys a boss fight so you can get an idea of what those are like. But all in all, game looks really good. It's a, it's a very pretty game. It's bright. It's colorful. If you're a you know, Mickey Mouse fan, then I think you'll really enjoy it. And the other thing is... Oh, what was I, I going to say? The other thing is it controls really well. Once you get used to Mickey's momentum on landing and being able to compensate for that... Because you see, you can direct your jumps, but he does still have some momentum when he lands. Actually, it doesn't seem like he does now. I don't know if maybe that was just me being horrible at the game earlier. But once you learn how to land specifically where you want to, like, basically once you learn exactly how platforming in this game works, it's really fun. So we're going to go ahead and go into Act 3, and this should be our boss fight. And I'll be able to show you the actual kind of boss of the first area. So you can get a feeling for how those work. Now, this is a $15 title, and I don't know how long the game actually is. So, that is something you may want to take into consideration. So here we have kind of our first boss fight in typical platformer style. And this is mo mainly about learning his pattern and being able to dodge it until he kind of knocks himself silly and then just bopping him on the head. As you can see, he gets his own little life bar up in the upper right. But the other thing is, and I don't know if this is the way it was in the original Castle of Illusion or what, but his pattern will change up as the fight goes on. So now you'll see he's hopping up there, and he's got a different attack pattern that we have to learn. So he'll do that for a couple of hits, and then he will change up again. Oh boy, alright, there we are. And then he's gonna do his roll, we can jump over him, he smacks his head on the tree, we bop him on top of the head, 
and he should have one more attack that he's going to go for. Whoop. And that should be that boss dealt with in a timely fashion. And then there is the gem that you gain for defeating the Masters of Illusion within the castle. So yeah, just a short little little showing off of the Castle of Illusion kind of remake, remastering. I don't even know what exactly to call it at this point, but the the main point that I want to bring up here is, you know, everybody was talking about DuckTales Remastered, myself included, and because of that, I feel like this may have slipped under the radar. And as solid as the platforming has been up to this point, and as solid as the gameplay has been up to this point, I don't think it needs to have slipped under the radar. I think it's something that people should be... Why can I not get that gem? Oh. I think it is something that is worth checking out. Also, what is in here? I don't even know where this goes. So I'm not going to go up there. But yeah, if you're a Mickey Mouse fan, if you like the Castle of Illusion, and as you see, this door will actually unlock as we approach it now, then I would recommend giving this a look. Now... As I said, I don't know how long the game actually is, and it is a $15 title, so, you know, if it's something that you can beat in, you know, a couple of hours, or less than two hours, then I don't know if it would come so highly recommended. However, it does have the time trial stuff, it does have leaderboards, so if you're into all of that kind of stuff with your platformers, this might be worth looking at. But I just wanted, I basically wanted everybody to be aware that this is out, and it's actually a good platformer. It's not terribly difficult, but it is a good platformer, and I think it's worth taking a look at if you are interested in this kind of game. With that being said, I have been your host, Jeffrey Lazarus, and thank you for watching.